Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good afternoon to all of you. Now, I wanted to wait for the 12Z run so we can get the latest information from the weather balloons and see what's going on with this potential tropical system that's forming off the East Coast. I'm showing it's got a couple of times it's going to try and form. Now, we still have this system that's forming over here for the next couple of days. And if you're in any of this pink, you are under a freeze warning all the way until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., all the way up to the Northeast. If you're in any of this peach, you are into a frost advisory all the way until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. And in mid-Atlantic, it's going to go all the way until the next day. So this is going to last all the way until the 20th, especially for the Deep South. So remember I told you I was going to last a few days. We do have a warm-up. We do have this big, strong storm coming. I will update you on that first thing in the morning tomorrow. Today, I want to give you a quick update on what's going on with the tropics as well as the east coast on the u.s what's going to form and what could we have maybe later on now as of right now we do have invest 90 e over here 29 miles per hour winds moving north at 11 miles per hour and you can see most of the spaghetti models is still coming in it's still going to meet up and become this very large storm with a lot of damage and winds coming to the u.s at the same time this cold front is going to stir up a low pressure system over here by the Bahamas and maybe strengthen up as it goes up the coast. So as far as what National Hurricane Center sees, we still have the Invest 90E in the Eastern Pacific. It is at 60% chance next 48 hours, 90 in the next five days. And it has become a little better organized and it says it could form up a tropical depression in the next two or three days. Now, our global tropics is still seeing that forming up in the eastern Pacific, as well as something else still forming on the western MDR, all the way from the 19th all the way to the 25th. But make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. I'm about to pass 150,000 subscribers, and in my opinion, we have the best supporting and nicest community you will ever go into. Now, I did update what's going on with this system yesterday, and I will update it again in the morning. Matter of fact, I did talk about this over 10 days ago with this pattern flip that we're about to go into and we're in it now now the latest update with national hurricane center on the atlantic side so far in the next five days they're not showing any kind of formation i am expecting a yellow circle just appear up over here because it is going to be an area to watch so as we check and see so far what is the model data showing us the icon model is a very accurate model it only does very short range usually the next five days but i got the 12z that's when we get the most data so as you're still getting this big cold front coming through giving you all those cold chills still a little bit of mixed precipitation up and up great lakes but as this cold front comes through it's going to start creating our problems it is going to start creating a surface low right off the coast of florida south carolina and georgia while we still have this cutoff low in the southwest while we still have that hurricane that comes up towards Mexico as this forms up the East Coast. Now, so far, it will keep it a little bit at bay, but we are going into a high ridge at this point. So all this hurricane repellent that you see blowing off the sides will not be there when this starts forming up. And so far, just dangles around for a while while we get our next big storm coming in, our next big cold front so i will keep you updated but so far it's just staying stagnant and just revolving around the east coast now you can see all this with your jet stream from the north atlantic oscillation let you know if you're going into a deep trough or a high ridge on the east coast of the u.s so the jet stream is going to a deep trough while we have these cold fronts but it's going to go into a high ridge soon before another storm comes through with another cold front putting it in another trough and right here past the 20th and 21st is when it has this chance to form up along the east coast and get pulled up on that high ridge now you can see this when you look at your jet stream at the 300 millibars so right now you're going into a deep trough over here on the center to the east coast of the u.s and as you go towards the 20th and 21st then we get that high ridge that's going on and we get a surface low so you get that high ridge you get your subtropical jet down here and we get a surface low forming up right off the east coast and it gets pulled right up on this high ridge and comes inland a little bit as it tries to form up then the next system that comes through because this is going to be one after another with these cold fronts it's going to push it away so far so far that's what we see but there is some potential impacts 
and it could strengthen up a little bit more. Now, I will update you in the morning on that next storm as well because I'm showing a big pattern shift right after we get these cold fronts where it's just going to stay northerly in the U.S. Now, this is the one thing we have going for us. These are sea surface temperatures. And as you can see, all these cold fronts really change the temperature of the coast, really cool down all the warm temperatures that we usually have for the hurricane season because of all this strong cold wind blowing. But you can see we still have a lot of good warmth right here by the delta of the Gulf, and it keeps going around by the Bahamas. Even this red right here is still strong enough to help intensify a little bit. But once it gets up this coast, if it stays close, it has a little warmth. But other than that, it's losing a lot of its temperatures as this system comes up. So when you check to see your potential velocity anomaly, what is your chances for favorable environment when this system comes through? You can see from the 17th through the 22nd, all the way to Saturday, we have a lot of favorable environment right where this cold front has come through for front-induced lows to form up. And you can notice that right after that little short window from the 22nd through the 27th, you have a lot of lift over here, but we go back to the neutral phase with unfavorable environment in the Gulf of Mexico. So it definitely has about a week or so to try and form up along the East Coast. The longer it waits, the weaker it will be. And you can see this also with the GFS all the way as you go towards the 20s. We started getting some lift with the most strongest section being around the 24th and the 25th. And it still lingers on towards the end of October. You can see this also with the Ural. You do have some lift going on. There is some storms, of course. But you have a lot of favorable environment once you go from the 24th and the 25th of October all the way to the beginning of November. Euro even sees on the long range that after that passes by, we have an even stronger chance coming in the beginning of November of favorable environment for something to form up. Now, of course, this will be in the Caribbean, maybe somewhere in the Atlantic. We have a lot of unfavorable environment in the Gulf and that is expanding and growing to the east. So as you look at precipital water with the Euro, you can see all this cold air coming down, very dry, no moisture. But as all this moisture rips through the Western Caribbean, over through the Bahamas, you get a couple points where it tries to spin up. It tries to create a front-induced surface low, but it's just too strong to get anything forming. But after that, we go into that high ridge. Now, when that high ridge comes in, it's going to pull everything in towards the East Coast. And so far, it's forming up right by the Carolinas, and impacts would be somewhere towards the Northeast. But as we look at the 500 millibar vorticity, look at the top of the atmosphere and see what is going on. You can see it's trying to form multiple surface lows. So as it comes in for the 20th and the 21st, you get a deep trough, but then it starts splitting up where you have multiple possible vortices growing. One in the northeast, also something that could be forming up over Florida that would strengthen up after it passed Florida. So Florida would not be in the impacts, maybe some rainfall. But you see how it tries to form up multiple vortices right off that east coast while we're dealing with this large system coming through bringing a lot of problems as well and it's going to keep going that way and staying in that pattern you can even see this on a surface low so far not showing a lot of strength thank god but as this very strong very large storm comes into our country this hurricane in eastern pacific still meets up you get surface lows trying to form up off the east coast as it goes up on that high ridge all the way to the northeast and so far it cannot form into anything i will keep you updated it's still six days away from any potential so i will keep you updated we definitely have this big thing to deal with as well and when you look with the gfs it shows almost the same thing it tries to form up close not able to it gets all dissipated so it goes a little further to the north and the impacts would be in the northeast now gfs takes this a little bit weaker euro is a little more reliable we all know gfs really hasn't been on it much but it did pick up on that negative pacific north american pattern before the euro picked up on it but anyway after that it starts getting some more formation because gfs sees something strong around the 25th and right around the 25th another chance for another surface low 
to form up right over the Bahamas, right over the southeast of the U.S. Now, so far in this run, it gets some more hurricane repellent and it boos it away. Let's hope it stays that way. So let's go to the ensembles and see what the chances are. And literally, the ensembles are showing that you will not get a surface low until around October 26, a little bit later. So you can see right here in the control member, it does get a surface low and it tries to form up over Florida and it just broadens out and goes up the East Coast a little bit, something rather weak. But you can also see down here in 18 that there is a chance for something to strengthen up as this formation and transition happens. So we need to keep our eye on this. Here's a shot of the East Coast so you can see all of it in action as it goes over Florida, forms up something weak, and it goes up the East Coast, stays weak. This is your more than likely outcome. This is your control member of the ensembles and gets booed away while it tries to stay there, but just gets booed away, can't form. But you also can see that many options show that it could try and do a formation. So we definitely need to keep our eye on this system. Make sure that it stays weak. Make sure that hurricane repellent stays against that system because something could still form up out of this. So far, this is an update that we have today. This could very easily change. And through the whole run, GFS is picking up still widespread 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts coming with this transition for a lot of people. Plus, it is showing in the northeast. It is starting to get the strength in the northeast, and it'll be 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts coming with it so far. So far, that's the strength of it. Euro is picking up widespread 40 and 50, even the 60 and 70 miles per hour wind gusts coming with this next large storm. That's why I said I will update you first thing in the morning. That's when we have the best information, when we're closest to when this is going to happen. Plus, it is showing it will rip some 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts all the way from the Carolinas all the way up the coast on that surface low. So far, that's, that's strong enough, but so far, that's, that's it. Nothing super strong. Let's hope it stays that way. Let's hope it shoes away a little further to the east. Now, as we take a look at what have formed before, from October 22nd to November 5th, we had Hurricane Mitch. It was very devastating towards Nicaragua, Honduras, with all this rainfall, very strong winds. But it came all the way back around after the Yucatan and still went across Florida and the Bahamas, still caused problems. And this is actually where we had a lot of bad hurricanes start up before in October. We've had Wilma in this yellow. We've had the Mitch in the green I just showed you. Opal in the purple, Gladys in the blue, and Hazel in the red. And I know somebody is screaming at me already. I did not forget Sandy. From October 22nd all the way to the 31st, we had Sandy come along and cause a lot of problems and still went to the Northeast. But thank you so much for your time today. I do appreciate every single one of you. I just want to give you an update on what could happen on that surface low that's still expected to form. I think we will get an outlook for it very soon. As well as this big storm, I will update you first thing in the morning so we can have the best information on what these impacts will be from the system because it's looking stronger and stronger. Now, this evening, I want to read to all of you Deuteronomy 7, 8 through 16. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is good, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repay of them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep, and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. And he will love thee, and bless thee, and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil, 
the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people, there shalt not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them. Neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. Amen. Have a very blessed day, everybody. God bless you and your families. I can't urge you enough. Please don't celebrate this Halloween. You don't want to celebrate other gods. It's not good. But I'm not here to make you do anything. I just want to give you some instruction. You have to make the choices for yourself. All glory does go to God. Our Father in heaven. And may he bless every single one of you. Forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.